Hello. You know, I have often thought that if I hadn't grown up being an actress, I would love to have been a doctor or a nurse. I, I suppose every woman has felt that way at some time in her life because of the constant opportunities in that profession to be of help, in and out of the line of duty. And I suppose it was also my great admiration for these angels of mercy that led me to play the part of a doctor in our story tonight. I wonder how many of you have ever been right outside of an operating room at night after an emergency operation. Sometimes they tell me there's great tension. Others? There's a wonderful sense of satisfaction at having been able to help save the life of a fellow human being. And such is the case at this particular moment in this particular room. I've never seen a resection handled that way before, Dr. Cameron. It's a beautiful job. Thanks, Don. The Lord was with me. Dr. Cameron. Dr. Dr. Julia uh, Cameron. No, no, thanks. Hello. Dr. Cameron here. <laughs> Walter, I told you I couldn't come with you tonight because I... What? Look, darling, Richard's daughter, Peggy, has just tried suicide, and it's got to be kept quiet. Walter, well, you know as well as I do, an attempted suicide has to be reported by law. What'd she do? She took sleeping pills. You better get her a receiving hospital right away. I can't send the girl to a receiving hospital. A scandal would ruin her father in one of the biggest oil deals in the country. And it may get me fired. Richard's is my boss, you know. He owns the paper. I'll hurry. Julia? Oh, hi, darling. Boy, am I glad to see you. I'll bet you are. Here, open the trunk for me, will you? How is she? She's better, I think. We can't keep her away. Oh? Why do you keep your bag back here? There are narcotics in this, my boy. Get it. Uh, I beg your pardon. Well, Mr. Richards, this is Dr. Cameron. How do you do, Mr. Richards? Doctor? Yes, sir. It's a personal favor she agreed to. Oh, all right. Well, uh, do the best you can. Get her on her feet. Sure. You know, I, I don't know what's happened to kids nowadays. I've given her everything in the world. And I, yeah, I've got to get back in there. You just get her on her feet long enough to say hello to my guests, and you can name your own price. <laughs> he isn't always that bad, but he's in a tough financial situation. Uh -huh. This deal means a lot to him. Come on, we'll go in the back way. Well, it's all right, Anna. The doctor's here now. Steady enough. Walter, get me a towel, will you please? Right. Well, thank you. You're not going to pump her up with that, are you? Certainly not. Gonna let her breathe easier, that's all. There you go. That's my nice These the pills? Yes. She couldn't take them very many. Amatol, Dr. Foster. Why wasn't he called? Oh, he's on vacation. Oh. What are you giving me? Penicillin. Prevent bronchial pneumonia. With all your first aid training, you should know that, Smarty. Why do you suppose an 18-year-old girl would need sleeping pills? Walter, the older ones have no monopoly on finding life difficult. Mm. Right now, that Amatol is mixed up with an awful lot of alcohol. Well, the poor kid drinks like a fish. More like a whale, to be exact. Walter, do you know any reason she'd want to commit suicide? 
No? I've talked to her a few times. And strangely enough, she's a sweet kid, Julia. Mm. So maybe she made a mistake with the pill. No, I doubt it. Uh, was that the maid who just found her, the one who was just in here? Yeah. May I speak to her, please? Sure. Anna. And Walter, remember what I said about this having to be reported. It's the law. Yeah, I told her father that. He said, tell the doctor to name his own price. You tell him the doctor's price is her usual fee, and it's the law. It has to be reported. Yes, sir. Oh, Anna, Dr. Cameron wants to ask you a few questions. Anna, come in a minute, will you, sure, please? Sure, Thank you. I want to ask you about Miss Richards. Um, tell me, did she go out today? Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Doctor, uh, all day. Uh, sit down, Anna, please. Oh, thank you. And? And, um, she came back around six and... I see. Very upset and crying. I had to almost carry her upstairs. Oh, she was drunk? Oh, no, no, sir, not so much of that. Oh, she was talking wild, saying things like, uh, she didn't have a right to live and, uh, Oh, I don't know, just wild. Oh, Mr. Richards had been so worrying about her being out. And I didn't know what to do with her. I just put her in the shower. Uh, tell me, did she take the sleeping pills after that? I don't know. It's the only thing she took while I was here was one or two of these. Benzedrine. I uh, went to press a dress uh, she wanted to wear, and when I came back, she was she was lying there on the on the on the bed unconscious, mm -hmm. and I found that bottle, her sleeping pills, right on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know where she went today? No. Oh. Well, all right. Thank you, Anna. Sure. Uh, Anna, uh, when she came back, did she have this case with her? Uh, yes. But you don't know where she'd been. No, I don't, I don't know. Oh. I have to go now. The, I have to help Mrs. Savage. Yes, surely. Thank you, Anna. She leaves with a suitcase and comes back the same day, drunk and hysterical, tries to sober up with Benzedrine, then she tries to kill herself. Now, what is it with that girl? How does she get along with her father? Oh, as well as anyone gets along with him, I guess. Mother's married again. Richards has done everything in the world for that kid. She's worth millions in her own right, and the insurance he's piled on her will make... You're thinking how much she needs the money just now? Oh, that's crazy. Of course, he's worried and overextended in his business deals. Look, you don't think he'd murder his own daughter, do you? I didn't think it. You did. <laughs> What? Did you see him? Of course. Oh, Perfect see. narcosynthesis. Would you give that to me in English? Uh, it's a technique developed during the war. Field psychiatrists use exactly this combination to enable patients to discuss things that, well, ordinarily they wouldn't even be able to tell. Don't Oftentimes they didn't even remember. Truth, sir. Yes, that's right. I don't care what he says. You don't care what who says? I love you. Yes? My life. I didn't see him. I couldn't help him. Don't tell Father. Eric will get into trouble. Who's Eric? I ought to tell Father. He's dead. Who's dead, Peggy? He's dead. Peggy, I want to help you. Tell I me didn't who's see dead. him. I've got a right to have him. I've got a right. I ruined Father and Eric. Peggy. Everything I touch. Shh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, Peggy. Don't think. Just rest now. Just rest. That's better. Rest. Yes. <laughs> Silver foil. Walter, is your car in the garage? I guess so. Why? I want to see it. Come on, I'll show you the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
there is something you want? Are you the chauffeur? Yes, sir. I am Robert. Well, which is Mrs. Richards' car? Dr. Cameron wants to look at it. Anna told me Miss Richards is ill. I hope that is nothing serious, Doctor. Yes, yes, it is serious. This is her car, isn't it? Yes, madam. Yes. Miss Richards gets much pleasure from the car. It can go over 120 miles an hour. On this fuel, almost any car can. That's the only kind of fuel she runs on. Oh? This is my son. Oh, how do you do? The lady is Dr. Cameron, who has come about Miss Richards. Dr. Cameron? Yes, that's right. I'm very pleased to meet you, too, Mr. Hardy. I read your column every day. It's my favorite. I'm majoring in journalism. Uh, Walter, look here. She hit the gate. You can't always gauge the distance. And you know what they say about mixing gasoline with alcohol. Yes, I know. There's not a scratch on it. No, I know. Doctor, and you, Mr. Harvey, I... I wish you wouldn't mention my son, that he's here. You see, Mr. Richards has forbidden the help to have family or visitors on the job. It's rather futile of Mr. Richards, isn't it? Eric will stay only a little while. Eric? Yes, why? Why, well, Eric, Miss Richards was just discussing you. What could she tell you? She claimed she blacked out. You mean she uh, had an accident with her car? Yes. And you were with her? Yes. We were going to Las Vegas. You were eloping? No, he doesn't know what he's saying. Please, you mustn't listen to it. <laughs> Supposing you tell us your side of it, uh, about the accident. All right. She killed a guy. Is she going to pull through? Yes. This time. You better start talking, Buster. How did it happen? She was driving pretty fast. This old guy stepped out into the road. I didn't see him myself until after we'd hit him. Oh? No. Oh, Eric. I can't go through with it after this. So you're trying to get her to go ahead with the marriage even after the accident? It's all right. Take it. Oh. We can't keep this quiet. I'll have to call the police. I don't want anything to do with the police. All right, I tried to marry the girl. There's no law against that. Her old man's got more dough than anybody's got a right to. I don't want to crawl for the rest of my life to be a servant like my father. I've been all my life without money. And never have I crawled. Never have I been ashamed until now. Oh, Ned, Walter Hardy. Same to you. Look, I got some business for you, but as a favor, don't file it till you get over here, hmm? I'm at Howard B. Richards, Bougainvillea Vista, 4721. I'll meet you outside and give you the whole story. What is the whole story? There's been an accident, sir. Peggy was driving, a man was killed. What is he doing here? Eric was with her. They're on their way to Las Vegas to be married. Get everything you have and get out of here tonight. Yes, sir. So you got her drunk and talked her into going to Las Vegas? She didn't need much talking. I ought to kill you. Richards, don't you think you have enough trouble already? We'll get out an addition before the other papers. We'll break the most favorable version. That's all we can do now. But no matter how we phrase it on the front page, Mr. Richards, it's still manslaughter. Peggy. Peggy, can you understand me? Jess. The police are coming. I don't want you to talk to them. Pretend that you're still drugged till I can figure some way to handle this. Don't want you to handle this. It's my fault. I killed him. Peggy, you'll do as I tell you. You've already caused enough trouble. Peggy, listen to me. I won't. Richard, please, please. I think if you'll just let me handle her for a few minutes, she'll be all right. I hope you can talk some sense into her. I've never been able to. Yes. Uh, Walter, you're going to meet the police down by the garage. Why don't you take Mr. Richards with you? Please, You'd better come sir. along with us. Please. I'll join you a little later. I must make explanations to my guests. All right. Who are you? I'm Dr. Cameron. 
Are you all right? Yeah. What will they do to Eric? I'm not sure. Don't let Father do anything to Eric. It's all my fault. I've got a right to marry anyone I want. Well, of course you have. But you're not in love with Eric, are you? Wasn't marrying him just a way of, of hitting back at your father, hmm? Or wasn't it? Why did you say that? Hitting back at father? Because you think he hates you. And maybe you think everybody hates you, hmm? Or that they don't want you, which is even worse. No, no, Peggy, I think what's the worst part of it all is... you don't like yourself very much. Could I have a cigarette, please? Why, surely. You know, I think you're wrong about your father, at least. You see... He's sort of a specialist. A specialist in making money. There you are. Thank you. He hasn't had much time for anything else. A lot of doctors are specialists, too. But then, well, they've had to learn the same kind of medicine that the general practitioners do. And so while they concentrate on their own specialties, they still know the entire field of medicine as well. But not so with your father, Peggy. He doesn't. He doesn't know the entire field of living. He only has his uh, specialty, you know? Will the police take me to jail tonight? No, I don't think so. Uh, Peggy, what's your hair? What's the natural color of your hair? Hmm? Brown. Oh. Uh, what color do you call that? Champagne hue. Oh. Whose idea was that? I like it this way. Oh, I see. Uh, Peggy, tell me something else, too. Do you like this robe? Hmm? Of course. You do? <laughs> These are all your clothes, too, aren't they? Yes. Does your father pick them out for you? Or do you like them this way, too? Because they seem sort of, um... Oh, well, slinky, I think, is the word, isn't it? Look, Doctor, you have no right to tell me how to dress. No, of course not. But a doctor's job doesn't stop by just giving a couple of pills any more than a fireman's does by putting in an alarm. How old are you? Old enough. You're 18. You're doing your very best to make an alcoholic out of yourself. You dressed like a woman of 40 years old. And... You know something? I'd love to see you with your natural color hair and less makeup. Which, by the way, is smeared right now. I like my hair better this way. Yes, I know you do. But then, as I told you, there isn't very much about your real self that you do like. And you should. You should, Peggy. You're a very nice girl. You're also a very pretty girl. Are you a psychiatrist? Oh, no. No, that's a specialty, and I'm not a specialist. But I'm a woman, and I know just enough about psychiatry to realize that you're not near as complex as you think you are. You, uh, never knew your mother, did you, Peggy? No. I don't imagine you've gotten very much attention from your father, because he's always been so busy. And he's probably told you that any man who paid any attention to you was only interested in his money. Isn't that true? Ah, oh, children can't reason and fight back. You seemed unloved, and so you naturally assumed that it was your fault. And then it gets to be a habit. And then pretty soon you can't find your real self anymore, hmm? Did you say your name was Dr. Cameron? Yeah. Peggy, do you think you could walk if I helped you?
She certainly must have smacked him. Mr. Richards, we'd like to talk to your daughter. Well, Lieutenant, couldn't you possibly postpone it until tomorrow? Doctor, you had no right to bring her down here. She's all right, Mr. Richards. But she hasn't recovered enough to undergo interrogation. I don't want you to say anything until Mr. Lloyd gets here. I've sent for my lawyer. Get in the car, Peggy. Isn't that a little rough on her just now? No, she's all right. She's fine. Now, I want you to take the wheel. Lieutenant, Eric says at the time of the accident, she was drunk. Now, with the speed the car was traveling, the impact of the collision must have been great, wouldn't you say? Yes. That's right. Do you remember that impact, Peggy? You don't remember the collision? You don't remember hitting your head? Yes. I, I, I remember the pain. You've got what you want to know. Leave her alone. Now, Peggy, at the time of the accident, you cut your head on that rear view mirror. Now, what I want you to do is throw yourself over the wheel as you would in a collision. Now, go ahead, just as though the car had suddenly struck something. Now, you see, Lieutenant, her head is nowhere near that rear view mirror. Look at this. She has a cut on her left temple. The right corner of the mirror is broken. Now, the only way that could possibly have happened was for her to have been riding in the passenger seat. You mean that Peggy wasn't driving? Well, both Eric and Peggy say she passed out. When she awakened, she must have been told that she was driving. She was drunk and she believed it. Didn't she, Eric? Take it easy, bud. All right, let's go. There, there, Peggy. Come. Come, Peggy, girl. Come on. There. Doctor, you're sure she's all right? Yes, yeah, she's all right. She's going to need an awful lot of help, though. But only the kind that you can give her, Mr. Richard. She'll tell you about it. She won't have to. I understand even though I'm not a specialist. I'll get rid of those people. I think that would be an excellent start. I don't know how to thank you. Well, you don't have to. I'd like to take you home, darling. But I gotta write this story before the other papers get it and tear us to pieces. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know. Robert, drive the lady home. Yes, sir. Good night, Doctor. Good night, good night, Peggy. You know, I love you. Do you mind if I don't take you home? <laughs> of course. Well, if you'd marry me, you could take me out of this sort of profession. Oh, I don't object to a husband working. I think it gives him a sense of independence to earn his own living. You know, someday I may have to force the issue by becoming a hypochondriac. <laughs> you silly. I'll call you tomorrow. Huh? All right, dear. Bye-bye. Good night. When you are ready, Doctor. Oh. Uh, uh, thanks, Robert. But I'm used to driving. I'd be nervous with anyone else at the wheel, and... Well, besides, you have enough on your mind already. No matter what he's done, he is your son. Get him a lawyer and get him a good one. He'll need it. Doctor, you're a wonderful woman. Oh, thank you. And you better take a couple of Emperor, too. Your head is going to start pounding in about two minutes. No, it is fine. I'm a strong man. I will not even feel it. Oh. Well, good night, Robert. Good night. Oh. Wonderful woman. Dr. Robert Royal, our technical advisor, told us a charming story. He overheard one of his seven-year-old patients whispering this prayer just before going in to have his tonsils out. Please, dear God, take care of me, and Mommy and Daddy, and Dr. Royal. But most of all, take care of yourself, God, because if anything happened to you, we're all sunk. Well, <laughs> good night. See you next week. <laughs>